Okay, so now we're going to talk about the ITTOs for Chapter 10, Project Communications Management. Before I get started, let me mention that if you're interested, we have lots of free PMP prep materials at projectprep.org. We've got cheat sheets, full-length practice tests, note cards, lots of stuff that should be pretty helpful. So there's three processes in this chapter. One's in planning, one's in executing, and one's in monitoring and controlling. So with planned communications management, we're developing a plan for how we're going to communicate based on the needs of our stakeholders. So we're trying to figure out and document what our stakeholders need, what information they need, when they need it, how we're going to get it to them, who's going to send it, that sort of thing. So we're planning how we're going to do that. And then we're going to manage communication, so creating and distributing the information. And then we're going to monitor those communications over time. So we're going to get feedback from our stakeholders about whether we're providing them the right information at the right level and at the right time. And then if not, we make adjustments. That's normal. I mean, as soon as they see a report for the first time, they're already going to be making suggestions about how it needs to be represented differently, which is fine. We monitor that over time. Okay, so let's talk about the inputs and outputs for planned communications management. Again, this is developing a plan for communications based on stakeholder needs. So here are the ITTOs. So you're going to have your project charter coming in as well as your stakeholder register that's listed in the project documents over there. And really those are going to include some, uh, they're going to include all of your stakeholders really, at least that you've documented. And those are the people that you want to be talking to to figure out what they need and when they need it. And you've also got enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets. You might also have requirements documentation that shows you, you know, what communication requirements are. Maybe that's built into your requirements. Then you've also got your stakeholder engagement plan, how you're going to be working with and communicating to your stakeholders. Then you've got your tools, and I want to focus in on a few of them here. Communications requirements analysis, as well as communication technology, models, and methods. So let's take a look at some of those. With communications requirements analysis, it's just determining the communication needs of our stakeholders. We're analyzing their requirements. And some of the things that could help us gather those are organizational charts, so we might know who we need to speak with if we understand the, how the organization is structured. Uh, our stakeholder register, obviously that's going to tell us who we need to talk to, and that might give us information about some of their uh, communication needs, uh, as well as discussions with disciplines, departments, or specialties involved in the project. And then there may be internal or external information needs. Um, we kind of need to understand that as well. It might be people inside our organization or outside of our organization that need information. Now, communication technology are the tools we're using to share information with our stakeholders. Whatever tools those are. Uh, it could be email, Facebook, fax, <laughs> whatever. And the factors that can affect the choice of technology include how fast the information is needed, the urgency, the availability of technology and the cost, how easy it is to use, the project environment, and the sensitivity of the information. Obviously, you don't want to share things with the newspaper if it's sensitive and you only want to only need certain stakeholders to know that information. Then there's communication models. This is kind of just understanding how people communicate, which can kind of help us as we think about how we ought to be working and speaking with our stakeholders. So in the communication model, there's a sender and a receiver, and the sender is going to encode information. They're going to encode a message and they transmit it, and it is received by, or excuse me, it's decoded by a receiver. They take that message and try to translate it. And oftentimes there's noise in that message, as we say, and hopefully, you know, we're clearly communicating the message, at least the, the, the sender is. The receiver is going to decode it, and they're going to send back an acknowledgement, an acknowledgement message. So if somebody tells you something, you might say, okay, yes, I understand. That's an acknowledgement message. And then what the receiver may do is send a feedback message as well. They decode the message from the sender, send an acknowledgement, and they may encode a feedback message. So the acknowledge message at the top may be, okay, I understand what you're saying, and the feedback may be, see, but I'm going to have to disagree, and this is why. So the sender encodes an initial transmit message, a receiver decodes it and acknowledges it, and a receiver encodes a feedback message which the sender decode. So it's just showing you how communication um, uh, could be modeled. And here are the different communication methods we could use. We could use interactive communication, which is multi-directional exchanges of information, so a conference call or a video chat. 
This is really, as they say, the most efficient way to ensure a common understanding. Then there's poll communication. It's used for large volumes of information. You're really just um, maybe uploading a file to a website and requiring recipients to go and access the information and pull it down. So you may say on your team, okay, we're going to store all of our files on Google Drive or all of our reports and whatever, and you need to go pull it down when you need it. You're going to pull it down when you need it. Now, push is a little different. Messages are sent or pushed to recipients who need the information. It can include memos and emails. You're going to email it to them directly. You're going to push it to them. Where pull, they have to go out and get it. Okay, so this is planned communications management. And just a couple other things here. You obviously need some interpersonal skills to understand how to, what the best methods of communication may be, and it may, uh, there may be some political and cultural aspects that you need to understand. And then your outputs are going to be your communications management plan and updates to some of your documentation, perhaps. Okay, now let's talk about managed communications. We're creating and distributing project information. So here's our inputs, our tools and techniques, and outputs. The most important output is project communications because that's what we're doing. We're creating and distributing the communications to our stakeholders. The inputs are going to be the project management plan, pieces of it, obviously your communications management plan, which you just created in the previous process, and some other project documents which you may need to be communicating, like your change log. That could be an important source of information to be communicated, as well as the issue log, lessons learned, register, quality reports, risk reports. These could all be things that you're communicating to your, to your uh, stakeholders. And then work performance reports. Remember, there's work performance data information, then reports. So all these project documents and the work performance reports may be things that we communicate to our stakeholders. And then we're going to use communication technology, methods and skills, uh, project reporting tools, and interpersonal skills as well. But ultimately, our output is going to be project communications. And so these things may include performance reports, deliverable status, schedule progress, and cost incurred. Those are uh, a few types of communication that could be sent. Okay, now let's uh, talk about monitoring communications. So it's monitoring communications to ensure stakeholder needs are met. They're going to see our messages, our communications, our reports, and they may want to propose adjustments to them, which is fine. That's normal. Okay, so here's our list of ITTOs. <clears throat> so like with all of these monitoring and controlling processes, or most of them at least, you have work performance data coming in, and work performance data, or excuse me, work performance information going out, as well as change requests. Because as you monitor, monitor your project, if things aren't going as planned, if you have to make adjustments, you may need to submit a change request. You've got some other project uh, documents going in. The most important things here are your communication management plan and your project communications. So what you, the communication management plan is going to tell you what you're planning to communicate and to whom and to when and when. And you may compare that against your project communications that were actually sent. So remember, in these processes, these monitoring controlling processes, a lot of times we're comparing our plans to what actually happened. In this case, the communications management plan to the actual project communications.